So earlier in the course, we used these data annotations on properties of our entities to override entity framework conventions. Now, ASP.NET also uses data annotations to validate action parameters. So in customer's controller in the save action, here we have customer as a parameter. When ASP.NET MVC populates this customer object using request data, it checks to see if this object is valid based on the data annotations applied on various properties of this customer class. Now, at this point, in the controller, we can use model state property to get access to validation data. Model state. This object has a property called is valid, which we can use to change the application flow. So if model state is not valid, I want to return the same view, the view that includes the customer form. Otherwise, we either add or update the customer and redirect the user back to the list of customers. So here we want to return customer form. And here we need a view model. So view model equals new customer form view model. We set its customer property to this customer object we receive in this action. And this is required to populate the form with the values the user has put in the form. We should also initialize membership types. So we get it from the context, membership types to list. And finally, we pass this view model here. So to add validation, there are three steps you need to follow. The first step is to add data annotations on your entities. The second step is to use model state valid to change the flow of the program. And if the model state is not valid, you return the same view. Now the third step, we need to add validation messages to our form. So in customer form, we need to add a placeholder for validation messages next to each field that requires validation. For example, here, our customer name requires validation. It's required and its maximum length is 255 characters. So I'm going to add a validation message placeholder using HTML.validation message for m goes to m.customer.name. Let's try it. Build back to the browser. Now, currently, we don't have a link to take us to new customer page. So I have to manually change the address here. OK, I click Save. There you go. Here is our validation message. But it's not visible because it's not red. So in the next lecture, I will show you how to make this red, and I apply a style to fields that have validation errors.